Thank y'all for tuning in to 472 Dominique. Um, looking lovely on the budget today. Um, I wanted to come at you guys and give you guys my uh, testimony. Um, I felt led earlier today to come on here and just kind of give you um, a testimony of what I went through uh, with the illness that I had about three years ago. Actually, um, it was th three years, February the, um, no, three years, January the 19th that I um, found out and it was February the 21st when I had the uh, surgery three years ago um, this year so I had promised God that I was going to give my testimony and um, actually like made a vow that I would tell people and I never got a chance to really stand up in front of a congregation and give this testimony so I decided what better way um, to do it since I felt led to do it today um, was through video so, um, hang on, let me make sure my volume up. Okay, it is. Um, but anyway, I felt like it was really, really important for me to come on here and, uh, just give my testimony. Um, January 19, 2010, I woke up and, uh, I was going to take care of some business um, going about my day as usual and I was sitting into the office of where I was conducting the business and I had uh, an excruciating pain in my back I mean it just was killing me like just just started throbbing but it had already been hurting I noticed a, a change in my sleep pattern um, maybe over the course of some weeks and I actually um, kept this journal of my what I went through um and anyway as I was saying I kept a journal I'm glad so I can look back I don't want to leave anything out but I noticed that my sleep pattern had changed and I started sleeping on the top of my hands I mean like you know how you lay on your stomach and sleeping on my hand to relieve the pressure of what I felt in my back see I thought I had a kidney infection or a bladder infection so um the pressure had uh, gotten so bad that in that particular office that day that I drove myself, literally drove myself to the ER in pain. So as I was sitting there, I just began to pray. I called my husband at work, told him I had drove myself to the ER. I just felt some kind of way. And it was not uncommon for me to go to the ER because I had had complications with my health over the years periodically. So anyway, you know, I kind of brushed it off. No big deal. But anyway, um, they got me in the back of the uh, ER and um, I was on the table and I already had them, they didn't conduct a series of tests still not telling me what's going on my husband still wasn't there I was all alone just me and the Lord I was all by myself so I just started to pray and like Lord what is taking so long it's taking way longer than it usually takes you know so my husband finally got there and was like what was going on the doctor came in and he uh, was just kind of looking this gloom look like he already was sentencing me in his mind without telling me, you know, medically they don't supposed to show fear or if something's wrong, show you any indication that anything is wrong. So he said, um, how you been feeling lately? And I was like, I'm feeling all right. I'm just in this pain. What's wrong? I can't sit back. And he said, did I do, ask me, did I do anything strange? To make a long story short, no, I didn't do anything strange. I had just been in an incredible worship that Sunday before, running around the church. I mean, jumping off the doggone pulpit, just worshiping. And uh, didn't feel anything. And after, actually, that following Sunday was that Monday that I went to the yard. But anyway, um... He just was looking at me strange. He told me to stand up and jump up and down, and I did. And he said, "How I can't understand how you able to do this, and why I don't understand." So I was like, "Well, what is wrong?" So anyway, uh, he told me that they found a large mass about this big in my side. The mass was from my hip up through my chest area. It hadn't started attaching itself to my organs, to everything inside, going all the way down into the back. To, to my butt area on my right side and um I was like well what is it he was like we've never seen nothing like this before and immediately what he thought 
without saying it was that I had cancer. Um, he said normally their procedures was what it was doing was for pa cancer patients. So he sent me to oncology immediately in that particular hospital. I stayed there two weeks. Couldn't they wouldn't touch me? They didn't know what to do with me at all. And uh, so I I looked at his face and he sentenced me by his look. And I said, well, "What is it?" He said. I don't know what to tell you. It's just like it's a matter of timing. And immediately I thought about my children, my life. Everything I've done and didn't do kind of was in my face. It was up close and personal. And he was saying, all I can tell you is, you know, you need to call your family and, um, you know, kind of basically like saying get things right, you know. And I just immediately began to cry because fear had took over. And it... it you know, you never know what how precious things are until you're faced with not having them. And somebody basically saying, we don't know what this is. And if it what we think it is, then you don't have long. You know, that's what that's that's what he was giving out. And I thought about my children and how you have to be careful of the things you speak. Because for years I was saying that I had this feeling and it was from hell. It was from the devil that I wouldn't live when I got 34 years old, I had a fear that I was not going to live past that. So now I was faced with this death situation in my face head on. But God, <laughs> but God is all I can say. And um, so hang on a second. <clears throat> um, it just, I was just baffled, puzzled and just think about my children. I'm 31 years old at this time. And all I could think of was every smile they ever smiled in my face. Every crazy gesture they ever done. Everything my husband ever said to me. It all mattered now. It all made sense now. Everything was loud. Sounds were louder than ever before. Smells. I was more keen into smells because I was basically preparing myself. If worse came, I wanted to be ready and release all of this stuff to make the transition that I had to make. Doing all this in fear. Um, so, um, anyway, all, all I can say is, but God, I, as I lay there, the Lord began to send people my way, prayer warriors. I mean, I had people that were literally assigned to my life during this time. A lot of my friends did not know the extreme of this situation. Only, uh, if any, you know, they knew I was sick. Some of them, but not the extreme. See, this thing here was in, it was internal, in-house. And it was for me to focus on my family, my husband, my children, my being, my life, my my mom, my, my, my brother, my, my family, my aunts. And basically in-house. That's what it was. And the Lord assigned some good people in my life at this time to help me through this. To pray with me. To cast down those vain imaginations. And to bind this cancer in Jesus' name. Because this mass had gotten so big, it fractured my hip bone in half. It, it literally was deteriorating my hip. And it had to been there for some time to even gotten that big. And... They said it was PVNS, um, it, where tumors attacks joints for no apparent reasons, and they may tend to grow. Um, in this case, most of them are nine cancers, but the, because of the way this one was so aggressive, they didn't know. So anyway, like I said, let me backtrack. I'm in this hospital for a week, still not knowing what's going on. The doctor finally came in the second week and said, we don't know what to do with you. I don't even want to touch you at all. But he said, we're going to do surgery in the morning. And uh, see, look at this thing. And it was at that time, it was just me and the Lord. It was me and God face to face. Me and God, me and God in this moment. Because I told you I was transition. I was preparing for my transition. If if this was going to be death, you know, if it was going to be that, I wanted to be ready. You know, I want my soul right. And y'all, I was praying so hard on that. I was cold all night long waiting because I had to be going to surgery that morning. I was scheduled to go into surgery that morning. And my body began to literally shake because I was trying I was praying so hard and asking God to clean me up and, and forgive me and repenting and getting all this stuff out of me and telling him, I just give you my spirit, God. Just clean me up. Don't let me 
leave any kind of way. I don't want to not make it. I don't want to go to hell. I want to spend eternity with you. And I was trying to get all these earthly possessions and things and cares of the world out of the way. And my, my body began to just like shake, just like this was shaking. And my lips were shaking. And I prayed all night long. And that morning came and the doctor said, uh, we canceled your surgery. Told you, but God, but God, we canceled your surgery. We're going to send you to Durham, to Duke Medical University. We're going to, I'm not going to touch you. We got to send you to the best. And you can pick where you want to go. All this was divinely, just a divine intervention from Jesus. So he was like, where you want to go to Charleston to do? I said, send me to Duke. Let's go. My husband was like, whatever, let's go. He said, well, we're going to let you go home for a couple of weeks before your transition but you got to use crutches so i couldn't walk for to those weeks were up had to go to Durham, get my surgery and all of this stuff but i said that to say this see when you belong to the lord when you are a believer you have no say in your life it's not your own my life was not mine god had all this stuff orchestrated divinely designed just for me and just to see where i was and what i meant from my heart and the be, make me mindful of being careful of the things that I spoke and seeing if I was sincere. See, I, I basically was pronouncing death on myself by saying I didn't know if I was going to live to see 34 or 35. I just had this. That was just from the enemy. Then I realized I wanted to live and not die and declare these works of God, of the Lord. I didn't want to do this. And all these people, I told you I had prayer warriors, people coming from everywhere. We were even assigned a couple that went with us to Durham. Uh, um, pastor and his wife, thank y'all so much. They went and prayed and stayed, you know, that night before the surgery and prayed with me and helped me see things normally to go out to eat, do something different um, upon our arrival there because my husband was nervous. We all were nervous because we didn't know nervous. We didn't know what was going to happen in that surgery. The doctor didn't know. He said when he finished his surgery, it was bigger than what he even thought. And, um, it just was amazing but anyway this this mass this tumor went detected for so long for so many years because it had camouflaged itself um as something that it was not it acted as if it was a bone itself my jesus only god it acted as if it was a bone with even when I took x-rays in the past, I didn't see it because it masked itself like it was a normal part of, a part of my insides. That's just my God. But I noticed my relationship with the Lord has started to change at this time. I started to get more dedicated, more faithful. And everything that was not like him had to come to light, even this tumor. So as I began to draw near to the light, everything that was dark illuminated itself. So it was timing for this thing to show up because of where I was going spiritually and doing I had to be whole. So it, the Lord allowed it to show up because I was drawing nigh unto him. I was getting closer to him. So this thing was all for me, all, all divinely designed. And I'm trying to hurry up, but this was remarkable. I'm telling y'all, I got to do, he did the surgery, came back, said, I don't see how you was moving. How? how I just went broken it just was amazing so they did a biopsy and sent it off and all this time I didn't know whether this was cancer or not in my mind they wouldn't even literally tell me what this thing was so the whole time like I'm telling y'all I had um uh the people of God praying uh tra traveling on my behalf and praying and praying everybody was praying my husband prayer life stepped up i i appreciated life so much See, when you face when you don't know if you're gonna have it or not you, you look at things totally different and i got inspired to want to really release this testimony when i heard uh this song by Dion kiffin and new covenant uh i don't look like or you don't look like and what i went through y'all i couldn't walk no more. All I think about is I couldn't walk for the next few months. I had to learn. I had to go through physical therapy all over again. I had this tube leaking the fluids out of my hip. A tube in my hip leaking these fluids when I was going after the surgery. That pain was excruciating. And I think about how far my journey is now. I, I went from 
a wheelchair to crutches to a, a bed, a, a commode thing over the toilet for me to have assistance. I went from all that to crutches to a boot to walking fine after three years. And I got to go actually this month to Durham for my checkup. I go every three to six months still, but I'm still, I'm cancer free. When he did that test, it came back. No cancer, no cancer, no cancer. In Jesus' name, and I thank you, Lord. I thank him so much for that, that I'm healthy and I'm able to raise my own family. I got a newfound appreciation of life and freedom. So I just want to kind of give this testimony um, about what I dealt with and how close I was. And if I didn't surrender my thoughts, my mind, and my being into the Lord, I wouldn't even be on this camera. They would have had my funeral three years ago. Uh, in January or February. That is the honest to God truth. And how the Lord do things are so sweet. A friend of mine, I was working at the time, a friend of mine called me and she said, I had this bad dream about you that all these people was at your house and we was there and getting prepared to go to your services and your husband wasn't doing that good and the kids and I, oh, it did something to me. I, I immediately began to pray and try to comfort her and tell her, it ain't, you know, it's going to be all right. But she called and see, that was just the Lord, you know, like forewarning that something was going to take place, but it was not going to be unto death. You know, it wasn't going to be what it looked like. And I'm literally so glad. And if you can hear that song playing in the background, that's what it is, that I don't look nothing like what I've been through, y'all. I don't look nothing like it. I'm walking out, and sometimes I have a slight lip when the weather changes, but I'm fine. I'm healthy. I'm healed. It made me appreciate life so much when I think about it. And a lot of distractions have came my way in between then and make me go back to what I was or uh, not being appreciative of my family. A lot of things have happened with my kids. You know, little distractions. Distractions come in your marriage, little ups and downs, little turbulence. And you don't know what is what sometimes that's just life but you know god bring things back to your perspective again and, and, and I, as i thought about my testimony it grounded me all over again so i just wanted to come on here and share that with you guys i hope it bless somebody uh it means so much to me and i finally telling my testimony i told the lord i would and this is my platform so i just wanted to share it with you guys i hope this has blessed somebody um be free and, and surrender and give everything to the Lord and he'll make your way smooth and he'll pave the way for you and go and make every crooked place smooth and straight in your life. So I just want to come on here and share my testimony that I am cancer free this day. And that's it. That's my testimony. So I hope you guys uh, been ministered to by this. And thank you so much for watching this long 18 minute video. And you guys be blessed and uh, take care. And I just want to come on here and kind of share my testimony. So I'll talk to you guys again later in another video. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.